that. Okay guys, today I'm going to discuss a subject no less serious than cancer. So when you hear the word cancer, it actually brings somewhat potenting images and memories to the mind. But then, we have been trying to understand cancer, not very successfully. So much so, cancer research is today called cancer conundrum. The word conundrum in English means something which gets progressively more confusing and complex. As you do more and more research, the cancer becomes more and more evasive and the research meets with dead ends. <coughs> Recently, decades long research into cancer, its etiology and pathogenesis led to the conclu conclusion that there's only one thing that can save you from cancer. If you keep away from liquor, smoke, pan, etc., it may reduce the probability of developing cancer. But then, a lot of many cancer patients do not have any contact with these common carcinogenic substances. You know, it goes without saying that a smoker or a pan chewer stands a bigger chance of oral cancer or lung cancer, things like that. You know, there is no challenging that. There is no denying that. But then, these are actually precipitating factors, but not the causative factors, <clears throat> which led to research into the true etiology of cancer the real cause of cancer and the research led to a dead end so much so that the finding of this research if you put it in a <coughs> simple sentence there's only one thing that can save you from cancer and that is good luck might seem funny but let me explain to you what I mean by this You know, <clears throat> the game theory, or to be precise, the evolutionary game theory, has been used to understand the interaction be between cancer cells and normal cells. Game theory, <clears throat> put simply, is the study of the tactics and strategy of contestants in a game. Evolutionary game theory of cancer studies the tactics employed by cancer cell to dupe and conquer normal cells. And the tactics and strategy employed by normal cells to defend the invasion of cancer cells. This led to the evolutionary game theory. See, the big difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell is the absence of a phenomenon called apoptosis. What that means is cell death. See, the, what happens in a normal cell? Each time it divides, the telomeres at the end of the DNA shortens. Each time a normal cell divides, the telomeres at the end of the DNA shortens. So much so that at the end of 60 to 70 replications, the cell becomes incapable of replicating further. And it leads to cell death. In case of cancer cell, this particular phenomenon, apoptosis, doesn't happen. And naturally, the cancer cell continues dividing indefinitely. And now, see we have been trying 
chemotherapy, radiotherapy, uh, you know, immunotherapy, gene therapy, whatever, to counter cancer. Not with much success. You know, we'll just take a look at some of the cancer cells, you know, and while you're taking this look, I would explain further. Okay. Now, this visual, you see a normal cell and a cancer cell. The normal cell, at the end of its tenure, commits something which is the equivalent of the Japanese hirakiri. Hirakiri means suicide. They also call it seppuku. So the normal cells commit suicide at the end of its normal lifespan. And the normal cell also divides or duplicates 60 to 70 times which is the limit, and this is called the hand flick limit. At the hand flick limit, the cell stops multiplying further. And this particular breaking of further duplication is due to two genes, which are actually called the tumor suppressor genes. They are also called PRB and P53, tumor suppressor genes. Okay, the other slide, please, next slide. Now, in this case, then the cancer cell gains a foothold on the normal cell. It's capable of infinite duplication. Or, it doesn't commit seppuku or hirakiri at any point of time. The result is the cancer grows infinitely. So there is also another phenomenon. The normal cells uh, end up, they just burn out producing ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the process of the cell burns out producing ATP. The cancer cell, instead of producing ATP, infinitely multiplies. So the tumor grows infinitely. Moving on. The cancer cells are also capable of something called angiogenesis, means they actually generate blood circulation within the tumor. In other words, the blood vessels grow into the tumor cells, uh, making sure that these tumor cells are sustained, they get nutrition. So the latest research has ended up in a kind of conundrum, an infinitely complex, solutionless problem, where the cancer cells undergo random mutation. The oncogenic cells and the oncophobic cells or oncostatic cells or tumor resistant cells, they have their own unique genomic characters. But the normal cell is more or less stable. Mutations are ones in a blue moon. The cancer cell mutates infinitely. In other words, we are playing a chess game. Imagine a chess game. The, on the good side, we have cancer research. On the bad side, we have cancer cells. The cancer cells are mutating and changing so rapidly, so dramatically, that the research is unable to catch up. So much so, though we can say drinking, I mean smoking, pan chewing, etc., precipitates or heightens the probability of getting cancer. Doesn't mean that if you avoid all this, you will not get cancer. In other words, cancer is a conundrum. Now all that can save you from cancer is a good old good luck. Thank you very much.